Vulnerability fosters good emotions and mental health. Vulnerability also is a sign of courage. We become more resilient and brave when we embrace who we truly are and what we are feeling. The Vulnerable Scientist podcast is a space for scientists who are honest and authentic or are working towards it. Join the Vulnerable Space by either sending an audio using the link on the show notes talking about your highs and lows as a scientist or by contacting Sarah Jakeri, aka New Biochemist, to schedule a chat. The Vulnerable Scientist Podcast benefits both the listener and the one sharing. You can now rate this podcast on Spotify or put a review on Apple Podcasts or any other listening platform with a rating button. And to share your thoughts, feel free to send an audio message using the audio link, either using your name or anonymously, to be published on the following episodes of the Vulnerable Scientist Podcast. Are you wondering what I used to upload and store my website spaces. Host Pineapple. Host Pineapple I've been using it for over two years right now and just never disappointed me. So host your website today using Host Pineapple cheap and affordable and reliable services. To start experiencing Host Pineapple goodness, click on the link on the show notes and you will not regret your decision. One of the other things I really enjoy, and I have, it's, it's not something, um, I mean, it's, it's a high for me every time I get to teach and I get to inspire because mm-hmm. I have been inspired by people before me, by people who have gone before me. So one of the things that I really enjoy, and for me, I count it as a, a small victory every time I get to do it, is, mm-hmm. is teaching and inspiring others. So I've, I've gotten the opportunity to speak or gotten the opportunity to present my work um, at a few platforms, you know. So Professor Kimani is a plant breeder in at the University of Nairobi. And when we came back from the African Plant Breeders Conference, um, where we met, he gave me the opportunity to present to his students. And I was super excited because... Um, these are students like me who've gone through doing their masters just like me. And I, could, I, got, I got to speak to them. I got to talk to them. We, could inter- we interacted with them. And I, also, I always count such opportunities for me as, as their small victories that I get to experience every day because I get to inspire others just like others before me have inspired me. So yeah. these are usually, I get to do this quite often and I'm always blessed. I get to, 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 to be very blessed to have the opportunities to do that, to inspire others. Um, so every time I teach, I have to say I'm always, I'm always excited because I get to inspire others. Every time I get to present at a group of, for a group of students, there are small victories that always encourage me to continue. You know, and then you, you, you present and then you come and meet somebody later and told you, hey, you know, I met you and you presented to us at such and such a place and you've always been an inspiration and I, I'm, I'm really grateful to have met you. You know, those are small victories that I celebrate and, and, and happy, happy to always share. So through my, my work as well as a bioinformatician, I say um, I'm a mentor, I'm one of the mentors for the Bioinformatics Hub of Kenya in, um, Initiative, so BHKI. Mm-hmm. I'm one of their mentors and I'm always glad to, for that opportunity to mentor, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, it, it's something that I really enjoy. And I have to say... Um, the other high for me, um, I count it for my, myself as a high because I was able to be, to actually teach. So I was, I was among the first uh, fellows for the first bioinformatics community of practice. And lucky enough, got employed as a bioinformatician at Becker and got Shame. the opportunity to be, to, to train the next cohort of bioinformaticians who came for the second 
bioinformatics COP. It was yeah. it was it was such a joy, it was such a blessing to have learned through the same, you know, fellowship and get the opportunity to give back, get the opportunity yeah. to train the next or to be a part of training the next set of you know bioinformaticians or, or cohort yeah. of bioinformaticians exactly so that was a, a high for me i really enjoyed it um and these are things i enjoy these are small victories i get to enjoy every day okay for sure uh, thanks for sharing mm-hmm. thanks for sharing that uh, it's important to take note of the you know the mm-hmm. things that we consider small is actually are very big but they're very influ- influential in how we feel about ourselves yeah what we've accomplished so far um so i don't know you had mentioned something to do with hiking when you started this podcast yes and i'm kind of curious mm-hmm. um before we talk about that hiking are there other hobbies that you have Oh, I have lots of hobbies. <laughs> I I remember I mentioned I hate being idle. <laughs> mm, yeah. I really do. Um, so I have quite a number of hobbies. So one of the things that I do and I enjoy immensely is reading. I love reading. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember very vividly in high school, we are preparing for KCSE and I have a novel. I had a novel in my hand reading. You are one of those <laughs> I have a people. geography paper. <laughs> I was one of those people. I have a geography paper too tomorrow, but I'm busy reading a novel. I was one of those people. I read a lot. Um, I enjoyed reading. So I started reading with novels, of course, in high school. Even before high school, I used to read the Kina Trufena, you know, mm-hmm. those, those series. I remember. Um, so yes, I read a lot, um, quite a bit. So now, of course, I read... I, I guess once you start reading, you kind of mature in the content that you read. So now yeah. I read, I read a lot more. Um, and because I read, I think I've, I've also, I've also grown in terms of my other hobbies. I love food. Um, I I enjoy cooking a lot. I I read a lot about food, of course, naturally because I like to read. Um, so I read a bit <laughs> because of I read a lot about recipes you know when i go somewhere and i eat something new mm-hmm. trust me i'm going to google it i will research it and i will try and cook it for sure wow. if i enjoy it i will try it so i i i bake a lot with my daughter it's something we enjoy doing me and my daughter mm-hmm. um we bake a lot we try and bake at least if not every weekend then at least every other weekend so we try new recipes we do cupcakes we do banana bread we do what and it's something i also enjoy with my close friends so a neighbor of mine that I told you we started doing fitness and, and nutrition with, yeah. we cook a lot yeah. with her. Um, we cook a lot with her. We try out new recipes. So I love food. I'm a foodie. Everywhere I go, I enjoy food. Um, I am also a very big fan of fitness and nutrition, just like I've said. So mm-hmm. um, it's something I always used to do from a, from a very young age. I played a lot of sports. Um, I played... Uh, I played hockey and volleyball in primary school. I played basketball and hockey in in high school. In campus, I played, I was in the basketball team. So I've always been involved in sports. And I mean, of course, after after campus, you know, with working and doing all that, being a a young mom, I, I didn't get to do very much of it. But quite recently, just when COVID appeared, I sort of had a lot of time in my, not really time, um, but I had the opportunity because now I wasn't doing too many things. And it was, yeah. also, a, it was also a way for me to, to make time for myself, do something f- that helped me rejuvenate. For you. So rec- quite, yes, for me. Actually, even my mm. kids, even my husband knows. Gym, my gym time is my me time. Mm. When I say I'm going to the gym, I am going to the gym and it is me time. I get to rejuvenate. Mm. Um, and I love the adrenaline of it. I guess I've always been an adrenaline junkie because I've always been in sports and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So quite recently, I started doing. Um, I started getting into fitness and nutrition quite seriously. I was lucky enough to get a very good uh, personal coach. Um, he's called Philip Otieno, and he's very good. If anyone mm-hmm. is in Nakuru looking for a personal coach, he's very good. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I started doing a lot of weight training. So I did a lot of weight training, lifting weights, and also. Um, and also 
um exploring a lot about my relationship with food you know mm. and how food affects our nutrition how food affects our our energy levels you know how we are able to sleep how we are able to perform so i i i research a lot about it and i experiment a lot with it so and of course with the guidance of 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 our coach i was able to you know sort of get into clean eating and i know my friends make a lot of fun of me especially when we're going out for parties and stuff they're like you you never eat you know you're always just looking at your weight and whenever i go home you know like in the african culture they expect mm. women to be big yeah. <laughs> yeah i've never been big <laughs> it's not mm. something i look forward to and, and it's something my even my husband got to learn to say mm. it is a choice don't worry she's not starved it is a choice mm. <laughs> Uh, yeah so hajeteseka <laughs> simtesi uh uh it is a choice you know yeah. i akuna mateso ako now she's very mm. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah so i enjoy doing that a lot um i experiment a lot with food you know different food carbohydrates protein you know drinking healthy drinks like smoothies so sometimes at work you'll see me with a smoothie today or something trying out new things so that's something i really enjoy And of course the fact that I love reading means I also get to read a lot about them and how they yeah. affect us. Mm. And yeah and and so in the middle of that I also got you know into hiking like I explained. So yeah. It's also something I I I really prepare for. Like I read I read before I go for a hike and mm. read about the location. I read about the statistics, how steep is it? What mm. kind of weather do I expect? Mm-hmm. how many kilometers is it you know what kind of environment is it um because it also helps me get into the mindset of knowing this is what, what to expect this is how i need to prepare mm-hmm. so even before i hike i always i will also shift my my fitness like my 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 fitness regimen so i go to the gym i try to do three or four times of gym sessions every week mm-hmm. um i you know so i'll do my weights i i i will do my weights on different days and i eat properly depending on on how i'm on how i'm i'm doing weights you know mm-hmm. so if you're doing weights you also have to be very good you also have to be very good at nutrition because you also don't want to tire the body so you have to yeah. eat very well mm-hmm. so that eventually you're gaining and not losing yeah. so Yeah I take my I I I prepare for my hikes quite in advance so any time before I start I, if I'm going for a hike so for example um if I'm going to go for a hike so like currently I'm planning to go for a hike in March mm-hmm. second weekend of March Where? so like two weeks before the hike um I'm I'm planning to do the Abadea traverse so okay. going hey. up uh going up Ruri Maria and then going hey. across um uh, Seven Ponds and then you go down uh-huh. table top let's see how much yeah. we go <laughs> it's like a whole 20 kilometers but I yeah i wish you well mm. <laughs> thank you <laughs> especially uh, that but yes yeah, so i uh-huh. yeah yeah i've had people say it's, it's not mm. an easy one but yeah, yeah so i will usually like start doing lots of cardio just to get up mm. my heart rate and, you know um get used to that um change in your in your in your lung capacity and then i do a lot of i eat a lot of carbohydrates mm-hmm. um before the hike you know just mm-hmm. to get my body set and um, yeah so yeah I, it's something i enjoy i guess naturally because i read a lot i also get to get exposed to to other aspects Which, of the hobbies that i enjoy yeah. Wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and go in detail with them what is that thing yeah. that um you've learned from hiking mm-hmm. that applies in your life that if not only for hiking you wouldn't have seen the depth of it ah uh, um i think the one really big thing that i've learned from hiking mm-hmm. is in the right mindset you can do anything mm-hmm. like you know um Let me let me let me let me put it in another way. You know like the way you 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 will probably get something that you have to do that is new to you. Mm. And you're always saying um okay, you know what? I will I will I'll put myself in the right mindset and then I'll do it. You're like mm. always giving it pushing it an hour ahead. Mm. An hour ahead. Procrastinating. 
Exactly. But with hiking, it's now or never. Mm. Yeah. It, you are here. <laughs> you are here. You have to go. You are up the mountain. You you are three quarter way. There's no way you're going down. You know, you're like, okay, I've come all this way. Yeah. I don't want to repeat this hike. I am going to force myself, put my mental um fears and doubts and tiredness and fatigue aside, finish, mm. and then say you wreck at the bottom of the mountain after I'm done. So with that, I mean from hiking I've learned that you can do anything, as in there's nothing hard. There's nothing hard. Yes, it will be difficult. The journey is going to be hard for sure. You want to give up, but with the right mindset, you can do. So what I've learned, like for real, even it, in my, it applies even in my work currently. Mm-hmm. Whenever I have something I need to do, I just, I will concentrate. I will literally block out everything, put on my headphones for two hours mm-hmm. and I get, I get it done. I get it done. No matter how difficult it looks like it is, I will, I will read I read about it, Google about it, find everything that needs to be done, and mm. yeah, I do it. Mm. So I've, I've really learned that um, th- there's nothing impossible. With the correct mindset, with the correct attitude, you can do it. And I always tell my kids, I think this is something I started telling them after I went up, Menengai went down the crater, mm. literally crawled up with my hands, is that, yeah. Mm. Uh, there's nothing that can defeat you as in even computers so my son is always saying mom this thing is difficult i'm like nothing even anything that was made by a computer humans made computers a computer will never defeat you Mm -hmm. i always tell myself that if i have something a coding problem that is giving me a a challenge i'll always tell that i like i speak to myself a lot i tell that humans made the computers there's no way something that can be done by computers can be challenging to me i will get it done Mm -hmm. It's a very good attitude to learn from hiking. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there anything that you would have loved to share or talk about or you would have loved me to ask and you want to put out there to someone listening to this podcast? Um, I drink water, (laughs) Bernice. I should. JB also tells me that when I'm... (laughs) <laughs> okay, um what would I say? I think I think the one thing I would love to share, particularly to young ladies, right? Mm-hmm. Um is that it's I mean don't don't ever give up. If it's something that you believe um, is for you and you enjoy it. And I am one person who believes that you really need to pursue something that you enjoy doing, mm-hmm. right? When some when circumstances allow, pursue your passion, pursue something you enjoy, pursue something that um, makes you get up of, out of bed every day. Like for me, I will be in bed in the morning and I'm like, today I need to go and do this particular project. I'm I'm already thinking in my bed how I'm going to tackle that challenge. I'm already thinking if I put this code and that code together, I think it can work. Find something that gets you out of bed in the morning. And it 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 enables you to persevere through the hard times. And just like I I, I think I, I mentioned this that I have I have you know you might have some laws along the way. Yeah. But it's because there's something but because it's something I enjoy, they've always been a stepping stone. They've always been a way for me to get better and learn more. Okay. And yeah, so I, I would want to, to, to tell all the young scientists or and particularly the young ladies, you know, in our African culture, we are always um, very, not as aggressive as ladies, mm-hmm. you know, as opposed to the men, but mm-hmm. don't be afraid. If it's something that you believe in, push forward put in the work, you know, put in the work, be aggressive, look for opportunities, especially like take advantage of opportunities. I've, I've met, I've encountered some people who'd like, how, how have you been able to get such scholarships? How have you been able to get fellowships? And I'm like, I usually just apply. By the way, I usually apply. 
if i get it okay if i don't get it okay but at least i try mm. so these fellowships are not for at least some people up there no they are for everyone if you see it it's just you and it's something you think yourself. you can do it believe in yourself apply it if you need to ask for help ask for help ask somebody to read your cover letter ask somebody to read your cv to make it better don't be afraid we can only be better when people criticize us and yeah. tell us where we are wrong Yeah. and we get to know where we are wrong and how we need to get better and also don't be afraid to have those people in your life who tell you the plain truth don't always have people who are so nice to you you know mm. you need those people who criticize your bad behaviors you need those people who criticize where you're doing something wrong to enable you to grow and mm. yeah i mean surround yourself with people who challenge you mm. um and yes yeah so for sure i mean always 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 pursue your dream and never give up if it's something you believe in push forward take advantage of opportunities apply for those fellowships go for volunteers don't always go working because you want to get paid if you have the opportunity to work as a volunteer do it it opens up so many other doors mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay um this was a good conversation um thank hmm. you I don't know. How do you feel after this conversation? Ah, uh, <clears throat> you know, I enjoy such conversations because they're also moments for me to reflect mm-hmm. and think about my journey and where I have come from. And I I really enjoyed it. I am I'm, I'm glad for the opportunity that you gave me to to speak um reflect through Yeah, I mean it's for real it's for sure authentic. I literally not had nothing prepared. Yeah. <laughs> so I've literally yeah. just spoken yeah, me. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Thank you for that opportunity to share. And I hope it inspires somebody to to keep up with their journey and 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 know that it's 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 you can do it. You can make it in science and I I'm looking forward to taking my career to the next level and um pursuing a PhD and and being able to you know to be to be an inspiration and to also provide opportunities for others like others have done for me so thank you why did you say yes why did i say yes <laughs> good question um why did i say yes i said yes because i i believe that through or through sharing others get inspired I've gotten inspired by listening to stories of so many other people. I listen to a lot of podcasts actually. I have a podcast I um uh, podcast player on my phone. I listen to a lot of people when I'm in the gym or when I'm just walking home I listen to a lot of podcasts. And I I can't tell you the number of stories that have always inspired me. You know, it's it doesn't have to be like everything that I have said that inspires yeah. somebody, but it can be just one thing. Yeah. It can be just one thing that I said that inspired someone and that opportunity for me to get to inspire somebody mm. or to tell somebody that it's okay to be you it's okay to to be aggressive and to to work towards what you want mm. and it's okay not to be okay also you know there are times in your life yeah. that that you'll be lost and yes. you're thinking what's you know you're going to a new place and you're like oh my god will I make it mm. but you know keep pushing one foot in front of the other and, and yeah you're going to make it so yeah it's it, it's an opportunity for me to share it's an opportunity for me to inspire and yeah i guess that's why i said yes thanks for coming it was very interesting to hear your story it's um, it's very inspiring <sighs> thank right, you it's been i don't know two hours is it almost three wow <laughs> it's, it's almost six <laughs> Six okay. o'clock. Let me, let me let me let you go. You know, do other stuff. No problem. Thank you so much, Sarah, for this opportunity to uh, be a guest in your Vulnerable pod- Scientist podcast. I think you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank um, you. Thank you, and all the best. All the best for sure. You're going places. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. All right, thank you. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye. You too.
Thank you for listening. You can now support this production through www.patreon.com slash the vulnerable scientist.